Welcome everyone to the HWBOT World Series 2016. We are here for the bronze final for the Extreme Overclocker here at the Computex in Taipei, Taiwan. And we have some special guests. I'm Truthman from Overclocking TV. This is Ligo, our overclocking expert. And we have our Doge meme with us today. Let's tune in to the draw with the uh, Extreme Overclockers on the stage. We have the uh, bronze final between Dan Cop, currently number one overclocker in the world, versus Raccoon, currently in uh, Europe and competing at the top ranking as well. Let's uh, go, guys, for the benchmark draw. We are waiting for you. Okay, let's draw the first benchmark. Vantage CPU. Veto. Dan Cop. Yes. Oh, sorry. Next one. First strike physics, full out. Okay, so the benchmark is going to be fire strike physics, full out. Okay, We're so ready to this. go. <laughs> We're ready as well. Starting 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good luck. So yeah, the bronze final, who expected that than the current number one in the HWBOT world ranking? Only, uh, in fact, not even managing to make it into the finals. But yeah, he had a show off between him and Extreme Addict, the current number two. And uh, yeah, it didn't work out that well for Dan Kopp at this moment. So uh, yeah, maybe he can still claim third spot and, and grab some extra cash to go home. So the physics test, Truthman. So uh, what happened here when they were like selecting the benchmark? So Peter Jan Plezier, so the owner of HW Bot, has like these 12 benchmarks on the smartphone, and uh, yeah, it just selects one. And the, the both competitors have a veto if they don't like the benchmark. Maybe they are not as experienced in it, or they just know like, hmm, Bangkok might have a faster CPU than me. I'll veto that one. So let's try another one. Too bad for Raccoon again. It was uh, pure based on, on, on utter speed. And this time the physics test. Also the memory comes into play. So uh, yeah, it will be a tough game, I think, for Mike to, to, to pull it off. But at least he's in the bronze final. That's like an achievement. Because that guy was, I think, recruited at the uh, Asus ROG camp last year in Germany, where he was first hands-on with liquid nitrogen. And it's, it's been just a year that this yeah. uh, that Raccoon is at this level at, at extreme overclocking. Uh, these guys are doing extreme overclocking. They use liquid nitrogen. That's the uh, all of the smokes you can see. And for the next 30 minutes, they would have to do the best score in Fire Strike uh, Extreme Physics score. The full out means there is no limitation on the frequency of the CPU. They can uh, they can run so that means the biggest and baddest uh, computer will win this competition indeed and that's in fact what all extreme overclocking should be about indeed it's like getting the highest frequencies getting the best scores and i'm not really a fan of of this uh, let's say limitations if we do like a five gigahertz show off or even a four gigahertz show off. it's all about the tweaking then and now this is the combination when you go extreme you have to be able to match or get the highest cpu frequency highest memory speed tightest timing and even still need time to find in those little 30 minutes to tweak everything so this is a combination of everything everything has to go right everything has to be rock stable from the beginning and, and hopefully we can see some good scores here fire strike physics so here we are the red team is dan cop currently number one overclocker in the world and on the blue team we have raccoon from europe that a year ago uh, was just learning out how to use the liquid nitrogen to push his computer to the limit Indeed, and, and it's so fun to see that we get like fresh blood, or how can we call it, like into the game, and, and really like, yeah, they want to compete at high level, uh, otherwise Raccoon wouldn't have come to Computex. He said, okay, this might be my shot to get maybe on stage, maybe get some vendor support, or maybe even just win the ticket to Berlin. Too bad it didn't work out, but he could still go for third spot. We now have Raccoon already in the benchmark. You can see this is the spider uh, flying around. I don't think if we can uh, find something funny in this benchmark that the spider are eating themselves or like, oh no, my legs are stuck to the wall. It does remind me of the those things from the Matrix, the Matrix movies that, that went out, the droids to, to, to look for Keanu Reeves. Raccoon, and, and, and... 30,673. 30,673, that's already like a pretty solid score. So in fact, the 3D Mark Far Strike should be like a complete benchmark. So there's normally also a 3D test included. Afterwards, there's the physics test, which tests in fact the processor speed, the memory speed and the timing. So let's say the subsystem. And then there's the combined test that combines, of course, graphics card and the, the processor and memory. But 
because we don't have like access to 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 GPUs, and that would only complicate things too much. Dankov, during thirty-two thousand three hundred and twenty-one. So here we go, Dan Cup is already taking the lead. Second person to submit the score in this uh, bronze final here at the HWBOT World Series 2016 Asia. Dan Cup currently number one in the world, is here to defend his, uh, his small title in, in, the, in this winning. He lost just a game before against Extreme Addict, that is currently number two uh, best overclocker in the world. Uh, that would be interesting to see if Raccoon can actually catch up with the, with the big guy. Yeah, Dankop was already like running as well on a higher frequency, so uh, trying 5,200 megahertz now. So if he can pull this one, he's had experience with the CPU in the previous, uh, let's say, semi-final, where they had to do like the vantage test, which is a little bit more CPU intensive than this one. So uh, if he could run like almost 5.2 there, he can run easily 5.2 here, no problem. Dankop 32,609. So Dankop putting up the pace, 32. 2,609, so Raccoon needs over 2,000 points almost to, to, to catch up. This is quite efficient for the cooldown period. So the cooldown period is basically the first few minutes of each game. Uh, in the, they have 30 minutes to do the best they can. And the, uh, they have to start while being in a positive temperature. So they have to cool down their CPU, they have to cool down their computer to reach out to like the negative 100, for example, where it is a good sweet spot to have the, this overclocking, extreme overclocking to be made. Yeah, and it's also the, nice to see that they're like, Daniel is on his normal platform. He us, usually benches Aces, so he was lucky to win the Aces day, let's Dank say, here at Complex. 32,935. Going strong here, man. 32,900, so almost breaching 33,000 points, which is like massive. And this is something that we, yeah, we couldn't do like with the previous generation, Truthman. I think the previous generation, Haswell E, we got like max 25,000 points in this benchmark. And those CPUs were running way faster than what we're doing here. The two extra cores help a lot in this test. And that's also why we will see new world records. Wait for it. Oh, oh, oh. Wait for we it. just had a crash on Dankup's system. Wait Give it to us, Daniel. For it. Get to it for what? <gasps> yeah! First blue screen of this bronze final. We were so waiting for it. And actually, Denko was counting with us like <laughs> three, three, two, two one. one, go. Yeah, indeed, very, very fun. And it's, it's weird that indeed we only have experience it now with extreme guys because usually it's, it's the other way around. Blue screens are usually for the amateurs and we just lock up hard. And now we, yeah, with Brothel E, we're seeing the totally opposite. But this is just because the system is pushed so close to the edge that they have this kind of uh, this kind of issue. You would never run into this issue by just uh, staying at stock. It's when you do overclocking and you go so close to the edge, like like this guy. They are like 5.1, 5.2 gigahertz. This is extremely fast for this 10 core CPU, especially for the uh, newly core i7 6950X from Intel. Yeah, Raccoon having having issues, I think, to 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 get the setup properly running. Uh, he had some issues as well, like you said, during the semi-finals that he couldn't like adjust all the software that that like it should. So uh, let's see where he's at. Currently booting into the setup at 4,900 megahertz, and now going gently a little bit more up, but he's over 200 megahertz short of, minutes. of of Daniel's uh, CPU. So Daniel has like the edge here. He has like a faster CPU, or can just dial it in a little bit better on on the Asus board. But anyway, Raccoon not giving in and just, yeah, trying to, to, to show his best. And it's like we said, uh, these venues are really important. So the mainboard manufacturers will spot you, they will pick you up, and it will be fun if the guy can go home with, like, maybe an extra motherboard in a suitcase or something like that. Always welcome, isn't it, Truth? Indeed, it's always welcome to have new hardware, especially here in Taipei, Taiwan. This is the mecca of uh, the computer hardware. Everything is pretty much designed and made here. Yeah, and he's running now, so uh, let's see if he can maybe breach 31k on on his current setup. So CPU only running at 5 gigahertz, not even close to Daniel's, which is running 5.2-ish and even more. Raccoon, 31,039. Whoa, I was really close with that remark, so just breaching 31k, so uh, yeah, pretty solid already. Now he just needs to find a way to maybe get a little bit more CPU speed and get it oh, going. Blue! screen Dan Cup was benching on the side and we saw the screen froze we're just waiting for it yeah just warn us next time thank you <laughs> <laughs> so raccoon improving let's see what happens now 
at least this benchmark might be a little bit more entertaining for the folks at home because they see something moving and something happening. But this animation, in fact, is fully controlled by the process, so the graphics card is not taking any part in it. Wait for Raccoon, it. 31,755. Ah, he's closing in, so yeah, maybe maybe it can happen. Maybe it can happen. It's a very short test, so 5,100-ish, but I think he needs to get a little bit more performance from the subsystem. I don't know if the extra 100 megahertz will give him the edge to, to, to get like 33k, but you never know what happens. You, this you is never know what happened, and this is the case here at this level with these overclockers. Everything can happen. The latest, the, the smallest tweak can actually make the difference in the final when you're so close to your opponent in terms of point or time of calculation. Indeed, just to see what happens. He's still with both players in the setup now. Dialing it in. Cooling down, finding the sweet, up, sweet spot Sorry for the temperature. And uh, we're running again. Raccoon running it again. Let's see if we can minutes. match. So we're already 10 minutes into the game. And Probably Raccoon breaching now 32. Okay, this is actually one of the fastest game we have seen because usually for the first 10 minutes it's cooldown and a first core placeholder and that's it. And you know why that is? Because you're at the top Raccoon, of the game. Raccoon 32,128. Yeah, Raccoon really following. So if I say next time 33k will follow 32k then. I don't know, he's like really, really coming close. Now one of the reasons these guys could start so quickly is because they have um, both the beast bot from their power and that pot really cools down really really quick so you can pull down temps like really easily like uh, the kingpin pot takes like maybe one flask one flask and a half so about one liters to get it probably cool down and, and the beast is just so fast and cool down and that gave him maybe the edge to, to quickly go to minus 80 ish and, and start straight at that frequencies that they imagined they could run straight away so Dan Cobb was like not understanding why uh, the score was like this. Is at 5.3 gigahertz. This is extremely fast for the CPU. This is one of the fastest CPU we have seen in the competition. I think the maximum we saw was 5,375 megahertz on this uh, Intel Core i7 6950X. This is completely new. The CPU just exists since last Tuesday. Yeah, and indeed, and it's like we we said previously, Mark. Like we got the CPUs on Tuesday, and everybody was running around five gigahertz, five point one, and the same CPUs are running now one hundred to two hundred megahertz higher with most overclockers. So ah, oh, it locked. Oh, the the system freeze. We are coming for three, two, one. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, screen. <laughs> 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 People are having fun at the Computex booth and uh, laughing, laughing out loud <laughs> due to the fail. Oh, poor Dan Com. But at least he gives us some show. Huh? He's currently in the lead and uh, he's winning. So, yeah, he's still relaxed. No problem there. You can see that he's relaxed because he knows that he's not going to the final. So he doesn't have to stress out for this one. So it's more like, well, I just have to show off now and be third and no. Yeah, he, has, he, has, he still has to show that he's still yeah. like uh, number one and maybe had some bad luck in the previous run. Ah, it's it, it's like that. Overclocking is not only always about skill. There's always that little bit of factor of luck that you need to, to, to just top it off. Sometimes you can arrange to have more luck than, than the others at knowing better the system, you know, tuning in a little bit more and sometimes not, just not pushing as much as you will normally. Yeah, but Raccoon is giving him a fight. It's like uh, he's still comfortable in the lead, Daniel, but anything can happen. If Raccoon can maybe squeeze out another 50 megahertz or maybe 100 megahertz, it, it could be enough to come like really on the heels of Daniel. And it's, you so see that, Dan that Daniel is like really, really pushing hard in the BIOS, adjusting the memory timings because the memory bandwidth here is really important in this test. So if you can maybe get a little bit more bandwidth, it might breach the 33K. Dan Cup is pushing his system to 5.3 gigahertz again. 5,316 megahertz for the CPU. We go into the settings to just run the physics test. We don't have the graphic, no, the combined test is not needed because just testing the CPU performances here and the benchmark is starting. The, the spider land. Yeah, we. Ah. Oh, and it crashed, and it crashed, and it crashed. <laughs> that was 1000 FPS, really? <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, this one is not coming, Daniel. 
<laughs> it's just go and try again. And these guys are really, really, really stretching it, and they're running. They're really claiming. It. Blue screen. The Taiwanese crowd is having fun with the blue screen, too, man. You're doing a great job here. <laughs> Probably the viewers at Twitch already put down their headsets and like. <laughs> Sorry for you guys at home if you have if you had an headset and just tune in. Actually, if you just tune in on the front page of Twitch and you had that blue screen straight away, that might be a little bit harsh. It might, it might be scary, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so we're almost halfway. Uh, Dan Cop still leading, 32-9-3-5 versus 32-128 by Raccoon. Raccoon really needs to find a way to 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 get at least 100 megahertz more to be close to Daniel. But he has pulled it off before. He was yeah. like always like trailing, 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 and at a certain moment, bam! He just surpassed and just got beaten in the final stages. So. Daniel still relaxed, waiting for the Asus motherboard to boot inside the operating system. Raku now dialing in memory in the ASRock BIOS. So Raccoon is using the ASRock motherboard, the X99. Um, can't remember exactly blue which screen. one. The, that's the... Oh, blue, 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 blue screen! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nailing it. I, I think we should give him like a, an extra prize for the most blue screens in one game. <laughs> I think we'll give him some Seasonic Gubby Bears afterwards or something. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, it, 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 these, are, these guys are really stretching it. And uh, temperatures, you can read it out on the Asus ROG panel, like just shy of minus 100. That's usually the temperature that many people ran these brothel eCPUs on. We are here at the HWBot World Series 2016. This is the Dan Cup, currently number one overclocker in the world, competing against Raccoon. And we will try to find out who will uh, be the third uh, about this uh, competition here in the World Series. We are in Taipei, Taiwan, and they uh, both use the X99 setup. We are halfway through this match. I did a question. The Raccoon is using the ASRock Micro ATX X99 M killer tree, if I'm fully correct, and and in fact it's a it's a board dating from the previous, let's say the initial launch of Haswell E, so the the first X99 based chipset CPUs, and and Asus just made a new BIOS for it to support Broadwell E, while the the Asus board, so the board from Daniel, it uses uh, or the name is Rampage. Five, five extreme it, edition it, it 10. Is 10. Yeah, it's really a mouthful, but that board has been specifically designed with Broadwell E in mind. So it should have a little edge on, on, on the ASRock regarding BIOS settings and, and, and the way memory can be dialed in and stuff like that. But yeah, I find it a really, really impressive performance from a micro ATX board to be like on in a bronze final here at, at HWBot. Really impressive. I did just so there was Raccoon dialing into the memory settings in the BIOS. The memory is from Zadak 511. That is a complete new brand that was launched here at Computex on Tuesday. And they are providing SSDs and memory. A lot of RGB light on them. Not for the one for the other clickers. They try to remove all this and just have the memory stick by themselves to uh, you know, cool, it, cool them down as well. Like this with liquid nitrogen from time to time. Yeah, indeed. And if you have like a heat spreader on and, and sometimes if you just pull the heat spreader off, it could be that you damage the, the memory modules or the memory ICs. So it was a nice gesture from them to give us like these naked dims so we could like straight attach our, our cooling plates onto them. So Daniel may be going a little bit less than, than 5.3 just to assure stability and maybe he's dialing in somewhere else. He really dialed in the memory. So let's see if he can nail 33k. And we'll, oh, it crashes really, really, really early in the benchmark. So, are you ready, Truthman? I am always Get ready. ready. Get ready. It's come. Blue screen! I lost count already. I don't know. We're at what? <laughs> six, seven, eight? <laughs> Maybe we can do a giveaway if the, the the people at home can tell us the number of blue screens, but we have to check them ourselves first. <laughs> But yeah, this is extreme. This is to the edge, just just near close to the edge. And, and if you go a little bit too far, yeah, you will experience the behavior that you're watching on your monitor or wherever you're looking from. Noah, let's do it. Let's do a giveaway. We're going to offer a, term, a tube of Thermal Pass for Thermal Grizzly and a t-shirt from Thermal Grizzly. If you type the command raffle and you yell blue screen. So if you want to win, you can just type the command raffle and yell blue screen.
that cop in the system again. Raccoon is trying to boot. What happens? You're taking care of the raffle. But they have to type like exclamation mark raffle and then yep. blue screen. Yep. So guys, type exclamation mark a raffle and afterwards add blue screen to the same sentence. You will be picked up by the bot and we will draw one lucky winner. Daniel cooling down hard now. We see a lot of smoke and this is one of the typical things. If you heat it up the pot, the pot is getting a little bit warm and you get like extra smoke generated when cooling down rapidly. Almost reaching the 10 minute mark. Daniel still in the lead, 32,935. Raccoon from Switzerland, 32,128. We, we can actually see the same technique by Dan Cobb that he used at the SWBot World Series 2016 in Europe just a few months ago. It, it is basically blowing the, the, the smoke of the alien to, to his opponent face. The, he was using that one against or Orion 24 in France uh, for the uh, SWT Europe uh, three months ago. Maybe that's a, a special trick for him to win. I don't know. I would not be impressed, I think, by it. I would just Ten do minutes. the same, I think. I would just mount my fans and just, just blow it into his face. <laughs> if you want to play dirty, you play dirty back. Twice as hard. No problem. So, okay, let's see what he's trying now. Custom run. Disabling graphics tests. The raccoon is having issues booting back into his system. You can see he's torching the pot. The torch is there because if it's too cold, the systems cannot cannot work. Uh, we have the issue if it's too hot, it doesn't work, and if it's too cold, it doesn't work either. So you have to be uh, quite sure that what you can uh, you have to be quite sure about how you can do it. And you're properly running now. I think this might be his uh, what we call stable stable platform now, and, and maybe he can still continue to tweak to to nail the 32 33k sorry, 33,000 points so close so near. Maybe we'll get it now. Less than nine Bank minutes of to go. 33,031. There oh, you, go. you go. There you go. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. He's doing it. 33 Ks. That's a really really impressive score. Like I said, we saw 25, 26 on the previous platform. So. These things just run insanely fast. And that's the thing. He, he just went in, changed a little bit of the things, and start again. So he knows that this is he can build up on that. So he know he can do. He will do more than 33k if he, if, if this band, if this test finish now. On the other side of the table, actually, Raccoon is struggling to boot in the system. Yeah, and that's always very annoying. You only have this limited amount of time. If anything goes wrong, if you have like straight condensation somewhere, yeah, it's it's. It's so hard. He's, he already needs to catch up to Daniel, and he's not even close. And now the setup is just not booting. Really frustrating experience at that moment. So Dankop increasing the lead. Oh no, it's a lower score. No, he had a lower, a lower score. score, score. Yeah. So maybe some issue in stability. So what it will do is reduce the base clock frequency to just reduce a little bit is um his complete CPU frequency in the end. Of raccoon dialing in into uh, the bits and knobs of the system you can see there's a lot of settings they know exactly which one they want to uh, to put uh, of course when they input the voltage uh, the voltage turn red because it's, this is way 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 above the limits that you should that you could put into your system at home yeah, it's a, it's a nice feature, in fact, from the BIOS engineers of, of all the main the, the motherboard manufacturers, in fact, that you get like these color combinations. White is usually safe, orange is already like mm, getting close, then for some brands you still have like pink or purple, as you would call it, and finally it's red, and red means way too high, unless you're using like we, these guys are doing extreme cooling methods, like using liquid nitrogen. You can see that Daniel was torching the port, the pot, even during the benchmark. This is a good technique to keep the com the temperature at the right uh, at the right spot. Thirty-two k and seven hundred still not his best score so far, so we still have to build up a little bit more on that. Yeah, he's really trying to get like uh, he can't run like five three exactly, so he really needs to 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 find a way to get maybe really close to five thousand three hundred ish megahertz to get that final score in. But uh, yeah, it seems that lowering the B clock in the operating system is like really having its effect on on the total output. It should be higher, but it's not. So now Daniel has to figure out what's going on exactly here. 
So the guys here today are actually the, these two guys are competing for five uh, for 250 USD on top of what they already won earlier this week, and they will be uh, part of the HWBot World Series. And uh, we will see later on today the final to see get the golden ticket for the HWBot World Championship. Yeah, that will be I think uh, extreme addict for the finals already did like a. A pretty good job during the entire week, and I think he's really happy that he has a chance indeed to to, to qualify for another live event. Yeah, no, it's going down. It's going down. I think Daniel needs like a reboot or something. He's not even breaching 32k at this moment. Raccoon is struggling with his system. Sadly, doesn't manage to uh, to make it. But you can see him torching. And, and and torching again the pot maybe eat up a little bit more than what it used to be before and to see if the system can start again this is looking better now for daniel i just dropped a few times just below the 100 fps while on the previous run he had like a lot of drops so maybe this is it Dan Cup Daniel benching this is the score finishing so we'll have the new score Dan Cup, on the scoreboard 3154 See, there you go, you improving go. his score again. There is five minutes left in this bronze final to know who will be third about the HWBot World Series five here minutes. 2016. Five minutes and he just keeps on pushing. It's not the, He's in the lead, he's comfortably in the lead, but he doesn't want to, yet, to lose that third spot. So keeps on pushing it, keeps on benching, keeps on trying hard to, to, to just gain them in futile points. And it's it's that's the spirit. That's the thing that you should have. Never rest on your laurels. Just continue. Continue. Keep on pushing it. That hey, keep that's why pushing we're it. pushing it. That's why we're here. So oh, it's locked up now. I think. Wanted to adjust again the settings in in the Blue benchmark itself. Coming. Wait for it. No, no, it's fully locked. I think. Otherwise, it would have come. But yeah, he gave us already like a lot of stuff for our money, didn't he? We have Raccoon dialing in on all the uh, the settings. Is is changing a lot of uh, settings at once? What do they, what do I have to say to that? Uh, yeah, if I was him, like, and I got like a smooth, stable, let's say. See, this is where he puts like a lot while we went lower. But usually, I I. I save a profile if this is safe to boot into the operating operating system sorry you can still dial it in more megahertz in the operating system but you should really have like a stable booting platform and then you can continue to work on if you really have to adjust all the values each time over and over again yeah but you never know you never know you know it's you have to change one setting at a time when you do the testing just to be sure that no this the is not the setting you fucked up. But then when you're in, in there, you have 30 minutes. You have to change more than one at a time. And you have to pinpoint which one is the, the right one to Three do. Three minutes to go. Yeah, and we have seen everyone, in fact, even even the top players, we have seen them make like these minor mistakes. In fact, something that they will never do at home. At home, they will have the time to think about it and, and just take it easy. There's, there's not this time pressure. This time pressure is really, really intense. Each overclocker, in fact, that we interviewed afterwards said, like, this is like really putting some extra strain on, on, on all the things that we have to do. And, and yeah, I think the, the gestures from Raccoon's head that it's not, not, not properly working out for him. He doesn't have keyboard, probably. He lost the USB. Maybe some condensation going on, because he is inside the operating system, but the operating system does not detect the USB at this moment. So we have Dan Cup that will be going for the custom test, custom one on his benchmark. The issue is he can still move the mouse, but he couldn't adjust any settings in 3D Mark or 3. Oh. Blue screen! You didn't saw that one coming, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> he already he already knew that something was going on because he couldn't adjust any setting inside the, the fire strike benchmark. So uh, something was really on the tippy toes, really running on the edge, like we said again, extreme overclocking. The way we like it. So 33, 154 for Dan Kopp, way in the lead. So let's say assuring his third spot, Raccoon will Dan probably Kopp is finish. Going to run HWBot Prime. Just for fun. Should we disqualify him for running something else? So yeah, that this is a thing as well. He found like a really nice CPU, maybe the best CPU that 
he had the honor to work with during the entire week and maybe he wants to set like a world record because I think with HW bot prime current highest speed was 5350 megahertz or something so he's pretty close with this CPU you can see that raccoon is eating up his, his spots there's not much uh, chance for him to continue in this uh, in this game there's just one minute left uh, not sure if raccoon is giving up now he's unmounting yeah, he's seconds. unmounting everything, so he's uh, he's about to to finish that. Yeah, it's game over for him. If, if the board stops working properly, there's nothing you can do. If you lose USB in, in inside the operating system, yeah, it's pretty hard to adjust any setting if you can't use the mouse, of course. Let's see what Daniel can pull off for the HW Bot Prime. I think the current world record is around 11k in that one. So basically, uh, we know that Dan Cup will be third about the HW Bot World Series, and just well, trying HW to. Prime, I 5.4 gigahertz. No. Yeah. Two, one. Blue screen. Ten seconds. Nine, eight. So seven, that was it, I think, six, for this bronze final. Five, four, three, two, one. Hand up. Well, game over. Congrats to Dankop for uh, assuring uh, his third spot. He's still on stage. He's still on the podium. So, congrats, man. Job well done. And also a hand of applause for, for Raccoon. Uh, really good to see the guy like in one year, like, yeah, playing already with the big boys. Really fun to see that uh, some guy just came out of nowhere and just like learned uh, extreme overclocking last year at the ROG uh, camp in, in Germany, hosted by the Case King crew and Asus. And yeah, he's already here in Taipei, so pretty awesome job as well there. That is quite impressive to see the display of skills by these guys here uh, here today. Um, I have to admit to to admit that Dan Cobb did show off uh, like a very good show right here. It was like aim. It's it's almost like he was aiming at the blue screen, right? Yeah, true. But but as well, he, he had like a really tense weekend. He had to wanted to to qualify or do well for this one, and he also had like another competition running. And I think he finished second there. Yeah, yeah. He finished second in another competition earlier this week. So yeah, he's uh, taking home some 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 nice cash, and that that's what's all about. You put in like a lot of time, a lot of effort, and if you can walk home with some extra USD in, in the pocket, why not? Well, they already got some extra cash uh, during the qualifier because every time they qualified, they had access to uh, to this cash. Um, guys, this was the um, bronze final between Dan Cup, currently number one overclocker in the world, that is now finishing third of the HWBot World Series 2016 here in Asia. And Raccoon did not manage to... Uh, uh, no go against him that uh, that well but it was actually very interesting to see is uh, is a skill in going to the bios trying the settings and he tried very hard for the complete game to get the system working fine and right um uh, what would be your 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 you know your experience about that game league of well the thing is is i've also banked on on the same board during the the entire week and my first board was like pretty awesome and and, and solid and, and at a certain moment yeah hardware failure and I swapped to another board and that board was like not cooperating at all and, and the same now like why did he lose the USB it could be some condensation it could be an electronic failure on, on the PCB something that got damaged by using extreme cold yeah you never know that's the thing there's so many settings that are that can impact your stability in the, in this system that you know you, you never know what to, what what could cause that um i i do believe that this game was a very nice show off about overclocking itself that this is a true esports uh, you can actually find all the score on ocesport.io uh, this is a true esport this is these guys don't rely on like they rely on skills they rely on making sure that they know the system they have the skills and knowledge taking part in uh, taking an account into the system so we will have soon the final for uh, the uh, the amateur and then we will have the final for the extreme overclockers between extreme addict and azan i can't wait to see that one because that's going to be a very tight uh, tight battle as well for this uh, for these two guys uh, we did a short giveaway earlier on the live chat uh, we are closing that one now and we will just draw someone uh, from the batch of the people that uh, that were in just to win one of the thermal paste uh, CP, uh, thermal paste from thermal grizzly a thermal paste tube from thermal grizzly as well as a t-shirt 
So let's draw the first one. I remember you that you have to uh, follow overclocking TV to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, eligible for for this one. So let's draw someone that meet the requirement. Here we go. And the winner is play with total that says blue screen. Congratulations to you, GG Play with Turtle. We will uh, contact you in the next few uh, minutes, actually during the break, uh, to have your information to send you this uh, thermal grizzly uh, thermal paste as well as the um, t-shirt and need to know your size. Uh, my dear league Goft, what can you expect for the next match that's going to be the amateur final? I just returned from the toilet before the launch of the bronze final and I saw that um, there were like some people in the crowd who took already like pictures of the settings that appeared. So uh, yeah, I, I feel that some that one of the two com contestants is like really doing his homework and is like really already maybe preparing. He doesn't have a lot. He didn't have like a lot of time to 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 let's say compare all of the screenshots and, and stuff that they took. But uh, I saw them like. Uh, handing out some, some vital information that could yeah make him the winner again. So let's see. It will be a close race, though. I think Jimmy Jimmy did like a really, really good good show in, in, in his 1v1. And if he can maintain the same level of performance, he will well, be there again. I can't wait to see that one that's going to be on XTU. That would be on uh, on the regular water cooling system. So no extreme uh, overclocking for the next match. But in after that match, we'll have extreme overclocker, uh, over, extreme overclocking final of the HWBot World Series here in Taipei. We're going to take a short break and come back with the amateur final. <laughs> 